Uh, my name is DJ Lord Yoda X from the Universal Zulu Nation by way of the mighty legendary Crash Crew. I guess it was the power of the DJ, the power of the music that inspired me to be a DJ. Seeing um, DJs like Lovebug Starsky um, and watching how he controlled the crowd with the music. DJs like Hollywood. I mean, I see Hollywood to this day and I always say, yo, Wood, yo, man, watching you spin, you taught me something else. He's like, we get away from me. <laughs> and I've been telling him that for 25 years. Brucey e. B. And of course, being around, you know, raised by the Amin Ra, Africa Bambada. And the musical selection and, you know, the beats and, and uh, getting you to think outside of the box. And things that you wouldn't think might have a beat or, or, or sound good. You listen to it and it's like, oh man, that's funky. So, you know, Jazzy J, Red Alert. But it was the power of the music that made me want to DJ. My first encounter with hip hop, I was like eight years old, sitting on the monkey bars in, in uh, Rosedale Park in the Bronx. And I remember, you know, I'm there with, you know, my friends or whatever, and, and I see some dude running up the block, you know, with pushing uh, speakers. And I didn't know who this dude was. And dude had a big cowboy hat on, tall, slim dude. He had a cowboy hat on. and. Then the next thing I know, dudes is behind them and, you know, they're hooking things up and it caught my interest. I'm like, you know, the, the curiosity as a young kid, I'm like, I'm sitting on the monkey bars, like, hmm, what's this? And I'm watching all this. And um, long story short, they set up the system and had them, you know, the thing and the DJ was playing. And it was no MCs at this time. You know what I mean? It's all about the music and the DJ. But this DJ was Disco King Mario. It was one of the first DJs. When I moved to Harlem, I got down with a group um, called the Crash Crew. After King Tim the Third and that Christmas rapping joint, uh, Nick Spencer Mike was like, yo, Crash Crew, y'all gotta do a record. Took us in the studio. All I remember was nighttime when we went in, daytime when we came out. And the results of that record was a record called High Powered Rap which was actually on Mike and Dave's label. So Mike and Dave wound up being the first independent label. Sugar Hill was out at this time, because at this time you had Enjoy Records, which, which was Bobby Robinson, and you had Sugar Hill Records with Sylvia Robinson. And then Mike and Dave came out with their own label, which was Crash Crew and High Powered Rap. So we was like, kind of like that first, first indie, so to speak. One night, Mr. Magic, rest in peace, played out. That was a high power rap was Crash Crew's first record. And um, Mr. Magic used to come on like two in the morning on, on a station called WHBI 105.9 in New York. And um, you know, it was like a Friday night and cats went, you know, we didn't have nothing to do. So I think I went home and Dal Seed went home. The cats just drifted off. We used to be on the corner hanging out then. Cats just drifted off and I'm home and I'm listening to Magic and I hear, we don't want to be left behind. All we want to do is just blow your mind just one more time. I'm like, yo, that's our joint. <laughs> and like that feeling right there, I, yeah, that was it. And you know, I mean, I've been a part of other groups and you know, had other records on the radio, but that was the first one. And it was crazy because when the record was over, it seemed like I was so amped, I had to go back outside. And it's like 2 in the morning, 2.30 in the morning, I had to go back outside. And I guess everybody else had that same feeling because next thing I know, here comes Daryl C and, you know, Mike C, Reg, and a couple other MCs. And everybody started, like, gravitating back to what we call Crash Crew Corner. And we was just, like, on the corner, just like... And all just done, like, yo, did you hear that, yo? We on the radio. And that's when we knew we made it. I mean, people still love that record. When the, At the end, when the breakdown comes and G-Man sings, when you're walking down the street with your box in your hand, listen to the sounds of the Poison Clan, I mean, crowds to this day still sing that part, you know what I mean? So we had that, like, first classic record, man. You know, Wu-Tang Clan, Rizzas told us that he you know, he, he made Wu-Tang after us, you know what I mean? Like to have a big clique like us and separate, you know what I mean? It kind of modeled it after Crash Crew and that was, you know, dope, you know, for him to say, but LL, you know, I mean, 
when he came out with On The Radio, his, his version of radio, he had a record called On The Radio. We had Breaking Bells, he had The Bells. And I remember him talking to us and asking him if it was all right. He's like, yo, dude, go ahead. He was a young cat, wasn't even out. Um, under Mike and Dave Records, we were also blessed, for lack of a better word, but we was blessed to bring out um, a group called the Boogie Boys. And uh, they had a record called Rap Is Not A Thing. And that was like me and Dow C's first chance to produce. So Dow C and I produced that record. This is like 1981. And uh, you know, I wound up DJing, you know, for them a little bit. They got signed. Uh, they got signed to a major, and they came out with a record y'all might know called Fly Girl. So I, you know, that was a good experience, you know, with that. And then I also road managed Rob Bass and Easy Rock for 10 years. So I was on the road with them during the whole It Takes Two thing. So, and they came up underneath us. That was like the next group to come out of the, the, the housing complex where we were from. The culture of hip hop is still alive. You still have B-Boys. I see the young B-Boys out there all the time in the park jams. Thanks to Tools of War, Big Up, Christy Z, Pop Master Fable. But I mean, the B-Boys are still getting it in. Um, the DJs are still spinning records. Everybody's still friends. I mean, it's great when we do the quote-unquote retro shows and we get to see each other and hang out and co the camaraderie is great. Hello? I mean, um, Tito, Fearless Four, those is my dudes. Treacherous Three, that's my dudes. Johnny Wild, Ray Vaughn, you know, Furious, you know, uh, uh, Africa Bam, you know, So Sonic, I mean, Cosmic Force, Queen Lisa Lee. I mean, these, this is all peoples. I mean, it's like it's, it's like a small fraternity. I mean, like our side of the rope, you know, for people that was that was doing it, the music, our side of the rope, so to speak, we're all still tight. I mean, because we, we put it in together. I mean, we made this culture and this business of music. Without us doing what we did, nobody would be making any money. Do, am I bitter? No. Do I love it? I love watching the business. I love watching where the business of music is going. I don't like where it's going, but we would have never thought it would have gotten as big as it got. I mean, the biggest challenge to overcome is the industry, period. I mean, the music industry sucks. I mean, it is what it is. They're out for the money. And the pureness of the music and the pureness of the culture lacks when money comes into it. And um, I think you know, if we can get back to loving ourselves and loving the music and, you know, having fun without the dollars getting into it, that we'd be going through a whole better time for hip hop. Um, you know, we got to really define the terms again, because rap is not the whole culture of hip hop. And as soon as somebody hears a rap song, they think that's hip hop. And that's just a piece of hip hop. That's not the whole thing, you know? I'm just, a, I'm just a real dude. I mean, it is what it is with me. There's no, no pomp, no glamour, no airs. Lord Yoda X is Lord Yoda X, you know what I mean? I'm one of the realest, humblest, lawless cat you can know, you know? So just the friendships I develop, man. I mean, you know, that's what I want everybody to remember me for because I've had different friendships with, with different people and, you know, I know different people for different things, so. I, I see, I mean, there's no place I haven't been, there's no, nothing I haven't seen. I got to share stages with some of the funk legends, the great Rick James, God bless the dead, the Bar K's, uh, uh, George Clinton, Bootsy Collins. I mean, that's family. That's Uncle George. That's Uncle Bootsy. I mean, yo, I, I actually got to share the stage with the JBs. I mean, come on. I mean, just talking about that now, the hair stand up. You know what I mean? So, I mean, these are some of the things that keeps it real. You know, I went to Iraq, performed for the troops, the first hip hop artist to do that. Uh, myself, DJ Easy Rock, and DJ Mel Star, no headphones in Harlem. We went to Iraq and did our thing for the troops. I mean, it's things like that you don't forget. And the, and the camaraderie and the relationship that you build. Like Mel Star, after going to Iraq with Mel and, and being in the, in the trenches for 10 days, that's my partner right now, that's my dude. You know what I mean? So that's the way you build up those relationships. I mean, you listen to my radio show, Free Dome Radio, every Saturday night. It's going to be a shameless plug, but so what? Listen to Free Dome Radio every Friday night between 8 p.m. 
and 10 p.m. on streets106.com. That's streets with a Z, 106.com. You'll hear the best of the, of the of the old school, you know, the old to the new makes it true. So we call it true school, you know, and you'll hear all genres of music, soul, reggae, funk, um, soca, 